Thank you, Ashley. That was beautiful. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our proclamation today is in celebration of Dorothea Elizabeth Peters and the life of faith that she lived and the incredible journey that she took. Born in Frankfurt, Germany, baptized in the church in Germany in 1926, confirmed in the Lutheran German tradition on Palm Sunday in 1940. What a wonderful beginning to an amazing journey. What an amazing little girl who, in her teens, at the end of the war, with the Russians bearing down on the Western Front, was tasked by the German army to spot the enemy planes. Dorothea confessed she had no idea what she was looking for, and maybe actually helped with the German defeat. <laughs> what a wonderful opportunity for her to understand what it means to live with nothing as she fled the front, found her way across Germany, hiding from Russian soldiers at every turn, staying in farmhouses, working and living off the generosity of the individuals that were willing to help a little girl just trying to walk home. It was in that journey that she discovered her true love class, and thought she was meeting a movie star. <laughs> they were to be separated again. Another journey would keep them away from each other from some time, and then later they would come back together three years later. And then she would find an opportunity to marry that movie star on June 3rd of 1950. It's an absolutely amazing story that brought her to our shores right here and the history that we get to share with. I still keep in active contact with Pastor Gherkin, our emeritus pastor, that knew Dorothea very, very well, and he had very fond things to say about her cause. And he really appreciated how she was a part of the Lutheran Church starting here in Houston. But it was nothing more than a basement ministry at the Eustace City Hall. A gathering of people that came together in faith, wanting to have not only their Lutheran church, but their German heritage recognized and preserved in this community. She attended and kept coming. She was a wonderful participant as a soprano singer in the choir, and we know where that talent fell to. She also was very, very conservative. We pastors don't get a lot of letters of accommodation and good job, fellas, and we love what you're doing. It's kind of a tough time to be a pastor. If we usually get a letter, it's usually complaining that we believe you are acting heretical. We believe that you are inappropriate. We believe that you're trying to change traditions and ruin my church. And I admit, for the most part, those comments are all probably true. <laughs> but one time in particular, Dorothea wrote a note to Pastor Gherkin that I thought was absolutely wonderful. Pastor Gherkin, being an old school German Lutheran himself, was lamenting that Christmas was sneaking into Advent. Now, you have to be a pretty old-school Christian to understand what this means, but there was a day when the Christmas tree was not brought out the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> you actually waited until Christmas Day to put out the Christmas tree. And somehow in our culture, and I imagine it has to do with economics and shopping and everything else, the Christmas trees started coming out right away, and the Christians were no different. We thought we needed to put the Christmas trees in the sanctuary right away. And our old school Lutherans didn't like that. They didn't care for that. Advent is a time of penitence. Advent is a time of looking forward to that Christmas celebration. But the celebration wasn't to start. It is four weeks of penitential reflection. And Pastor Gherkin was waxing eloquently as he would from time to time about the loss of that beautiful tradition. And this is what Dorothea sat down and wrote to him. Pastor Gherkin, I wholeheartedly agree with your position on not having Christmas decorations in church at any time. 
For 24 years, I thought I was alone thinking like this. <laughs> Signed, your dear Peters. <laughs> Pastor Gherkin checked that letter in her file. We don't get many of those. Gherkin, it was special. Uh, some of you don't know, and I did have a chance to talk with some of them. I got to see her in the hospital back in April. And I got a chance to visit with her, and she is a special, special lady. I can see that right away. And it's, I'm ashamed to admit, we were working on getting her set up on shed and visits, and it just never happened. And that's too bad, because that's my loss. I say all the time, the beauty and value of being in contact with wonderful people like Dortea is really for the benefit of the pastor, not for the benefit of the person they're visiting. My loss, but her gain. Because even though her journey started out as a little spotter of enemy aircraft, whatever that was, a reporter, a columnist, a photographer, a bookkeeper, a wonderful singer, a wonderful wife, a wonderful mother, her journey believe it or not, does not end here. And I would suggest to you the promise that was made in her baptism, the vows that she took at her confirmation, what I know for a fact she believed because she confessed as much to me when I saw her name. Her Savior is taking her, and her journey has just begun. Amen. Would you please rise as we turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death to the grave of our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Dorothea and all who mourn comfort in their grief and sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the grief, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead and assurance of a holy and certain hope and the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us grace to be conformed to the likeness of Christ by sharing in his sufferings, even as Dorothea was in her illness, that we may follow Christ in faith and know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Top by our Lord, entrusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to life everlasting and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the benediction Thomas and the benediction. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his eternal peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our closing selection still. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.